how are we going to deliver blended learning? In short, what a blended model is, is a constant decision-making process that you're engaging with as to whether to follow a flipped or a traditional model of a classroom. Flip learning gained a lot of popularity a few years ago, but it's been kind of rejected. It's been kind of rejected because when you get into flip learning, the kind of temptation is to try and flip everything, to try and set everything as homework before lessons. And then what people were seeing was some kind of really muddled lessons and some really confused kids because they weren't engaging very well with the out of lesson learning or the teachers were flipping the wrong things. So a blended model is where you're constantly choosing what to flip to the homework and what to actually teach in a traditional manner. And I would suggest that it's really important that you look at each individual objective and you think about each individual group. The key idea behind flip learning is that you're pushing out the easier stuff, the knowledge and understanding to before the lesson so you can start higher up the Bloom's taxonomy. So you're constantly trying to choose where on this scale between flip learning and traditional classrooms your teaching is going to be. And you're doing that by the objectives and you're doing that by the people in that group. So let's say I've got six objectives that I want to teach in that week and I've picked a pretty difficult to flip topic. I've picked the motor effect in physics, which is a really, really difficult topic. And actually, I'm going to look at them and the temptation is just to think, no, actually, everything down this end, this kind of lower end of Bloom's taxonomy, the state and described ones, they are going to be the type of thing that I can flip and then the rest I can actually teach traditionally in the classroom because it's taken a bit more time to build up. It's a little bit more complicated than that and you have to really think carefully about the exact objective, not just to worry about the Bloom's command word that's in the objective. In fact, I'd say describe how an electric motor works is much harder to teach in a flip fashion because what's going to happen is they're going to watch a video on that and they're going to understand the video, but they're going to come in with some misconceptions because actually the way a motor works is a really tri tricky thing to describe. <laughs> and they're going to come in with muddled language and they're going to fail in those questions that they get about it. So actually, that one, I'm going to keep that into a traditional model. Similarly, explaining the motor effect in terms of interacting magnetic fields, that's quite difficult as well. And this one, explain why a DC motor needs a split ring commutator, is going to be really tricky. But this one, apply the equation linking force, magnetic field strength, and current and length, is a bit of maths. And I'm quite confident with most of my physics groups that they'll be able to handle using an equation, especially by the time probably in year 11 when I'm going to teach this topic, they're going to be able to handle using an equation, inserting numbers, doing the conversions, rearranging quite well. So actually I'm going to choose to flip that one and I'm going to keep the other ones into my traditional classroom. So now it becomes, I'm going to set some work to really cover these things and I'm going to cover these in my classroom in a traditional way. I'm going to build these up in a classroom where I have the ability to check how the kids are doing bit by bit. I use all my assessment for learning techniques in the classroom to make sure that I'm checking that they aren't getting long term misconceptions about, for example, the way an electric motor works. So my teaching through this topic is going to become that I'm going to set these two as a flip task and I'm going to check that they've understood these and they can manage to do these at the start of the lesson. And then I'm going to move on to these two objectives in more of a traditional classroom setting, somewhere in the middle. Probably I'm going to include in my flip resources some of the language and some of the descriptions about these things. They're not going to come into the lesson with no idea what a split ring commutator is, but they're not going to be ready to explain exactly why a DC electric motor needs a split ring commutator to continuously rotate. And then again, I'm going to use my FL techniques to check whether they really understood these things. And then I'm going to move on to the last ones, which are the big kickers in this topic. The really difficult ideas of using Fleming's left hand rule to make predictions and explaining the motor effect in terms of overlapping fields and how the field around the current carrying wire can interact with the permanent magnetic field. All the really difficult conceptual ideas within this topic that need to be built up really, really carefully to make sure that we don't have any long term misunderstandings. With a different group, I might make different decisions. I might move more of that into the flipped classroom or I might do more of that in a traditional style. The other key thing is where you put your assessment. Make your assessment point instead of being at the end of a topic. Make your assessment point when they're coming into lesson. Make the assessment an entry into a topic. Of course, you're still going to do the summative assessment. You need some kind of assessment of their foundational knowledge when they come into a classroom. If you expect them to have learned something, out of lessons. You need to check that when they enter your lesson before you start 
applying before you start analyzing and evaluating. You need to do some kind of an entry assessment into that lesson to make sure that they have actually learned what you expected them to learn out of lessons. So the two most important things to get right to make sure blended learning is a success in your classroom is that you're constantly choosing whether the flipped learning or whether a traditional classroom is the right thing for that objective and for that group and that you are assessing on the way in so you know where your students start points are and you know whether they have got what they learned out of lessons. It does work, it really does work when you have the right type of group, when you've picked the right topic to do, it does mean that kids come into the lesson with knowledge and understanding and they're prepared to apply it straight away. It can lead to really fantastic lessons with enthusiastic learners who are ready to take responsibility for their learning, but it can also go completely wrong. One of the most important things about blended learning is you have to teach them how to do it. You have to explain where those advantages are and you have to show them those advantages, you have to show it's working. I've been really trying to embed blended learning into my practice for the last five years. Where it's worked really, really well, it's worked well and I've got incredible exam results and where it's worked badly, actually it's led to a blame culture. It's worked worse in groups where I haven't had time for them to build a relationship with me and for them to build a trust in themselves really as learners to learn in this way. And it's worked best where I have had the time and I have taken the time to actually teach them how to learn in a different style. Perhaps show your students this video where I show them how to learn from videos. To teach them and show them the benefits of actually working in this way. So for example, the first year I tried this with a year 13 class who I just met, they didn't know me, I was new to the school and really they were just looking for an excuse as to why they weren't gonna do well in their A-levels. And I marched in with all these big ideas and I just set them the homework and told them to be responsible and it didn't work all that well. There was a kind of blame culture, it wasn't a very nice thing and I had to kind of backtrack into a more traditional model. Where it has worked well though was where I took a group from year 9 through to year 11 and even many of those through to year 13 and they really engaged. It took a bit of time at first to really get them to trust this. Once they started to do much better in tests compared to other groups, then they really started to trust this way of working. Now, at times, I was still questioning with that group whether it was working, whether I should go back to a more traditional model. And that's because there were some people who found it a bit more difficult to really get into this model of doing homework. But really, even for those kids, when it came to the actual exams, when it came to studying at home, they were much more prepared to actually revise. They knew a little bit more about how to learn effectively at home. And so they ended up doing better in those exams anyway. Blended learning, we've got this. Come on, we've got the skills, we've got the expertise. Come on, September, let's go.